As you were singing, the Lord revealed to me that there is a healing that needs to take place in your body. He revealed that. that There's a healing that needs to be. Listen, I want you to stretch your hand towards this mighty woman of God. Give me the oil. In the name of Jesus. 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 Where is it healing? In your hands? Is it in your hands? Mona, anoint her hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray her healing right now. Healing in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Healing Lord. Healing Lord. Healing Lord. Healing Lord. Healing Lord, my healer. Hallelujah, and it is so. Hallelujah! 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 The Lord revealed, the Lord revealed as I walked by that there's a spirit of grief that's trying to come into your life. Grief over the past, grief over mistakes, grief over things that you feel like you can't recover from. But God said, I'm taking that spirit of grief from you. Are you listening to me? I am taking the spirit of grief from you. He said he'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I want you to clap your hands and give God. Point your hands and say this with me. Say, I declare and decree. There will be no more grief in your life. There is no more grief in your life. Lift up your hands, Ursula. No more grief in your life. No more grief in your life. He said, I am. I am. He said, I'm restoring the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm have taken up. Restoration, 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 be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored. I cancel every demonic assignment. I cancel every demonic assignment. Every demonic stronghold, every spiritual husband, lose your hold right now. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. And I replace you with joy. I replace you with the Holy Spirit. I replace you with strength. I replace you with healing. I replace it with peace. I replace it with abundance. And it is so. Open up your mouths and give God praise. It's breaking now. 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 Get on the mic and say yeah, say yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, daughter. Hey. 
Before what the enemy did in your past can affect your future. Are you listening? There was a prophetic assignment for you to be here for six weeks straight. And you missed last week. But God said, I'm going to be gracious. I petitioned God for you, for him to be gracious to you. Are you listening? Lift up your hands, daughter. I need you to everybody point to her right now. And I need you to... Listen, I hear this in the spirit. Listen, things that were normal, but dysfunctional, you will no longer be comfortable in. Starting tonight, about midnight, even phone calls that used to find comfort in, you will no longer find comfort in. <laughs> because God is healing that brokenness. What I'm hearing in the spirit, God said to ask you, do you want to be healed? Listen, no, 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 no. Healing means that the way you live is going to change. Healing means God's going to take you through a course where you're going to lose some people, not a death, but weights are going to be falling off and you're going to wonder why. It is because God is healing you and when God heals you, he makes you functional to get ready for the real life he has for you. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? God said, I'm going to say, heal you. I declare it so. Stretch forth your hands to this woman of God. I need you to say, I am healed in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid. You are good. You are good. You and Papa Sly, you good. You good. Say, I am healed in Jesus' name. I am healed in Jesus' name. Say, I tear down every demonic altar of the spirit of perversion that had come against me. When I was a child, there was a man named David that you do not remember that touched you inappropriately. It wasn't just a woman, it was another gentleman by the name of David that also did what he did. But tear it down in the name of I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Christ. Say every spiritual altar and every demonic husband, I cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast it out of be healed of us. Healed. 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 Can you get that song for her? Spoken, and I know that it is so. Wait, hey, 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 hey. In this storm, you are peace, and your love won't let me go. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. Stretch forth your hand, intercessor. Stretch forth your hands, both hands. Okay. By your stripes, I am here. I am healed with one touch. With one touch I am made whole. I am made whole. You have spoken, you have spoken. and I know and that. I know that it is so. Through the storm, in this storm, you are, you are peace, and your love, your love won't let me go. And I know that you have spoken, and I, and I know that it is so. You have spoken, you have spoken, and I know it is so. Point to yourself, Adrian, say, You have spoken, you have spoken, and I know that it is so. There is no there's no fear, Adrian, I hear in the spirit God saying, there's no fear in him. 
You will be ready to retire. You will have more than enough to live in comfort. You, hey, are you listening, Adrian? Is it true, not true? Have you been worrying about retiring and your future and things of that nature? Are you concerned about that? Is it true, not true? Then speak it out and say, I will be. Open up your mouth, mama. Lift up your hands. Say, I will be. I will be. And I will have enough. And I will have enough. To retire comfortably. To retire comfortably. I will have money in my bank account. I will have money in my bank Houses account. Houses that are paid for. It. Houses that are paid Say, for. Say, I declare and I call it forth in the name of Jesus. I declare and I call it forth. Now rejoice in that work because it is so. I know that it is so. I have spoken and I know that. What do you see in your spirit as we speak? What do you see in your spirit as we speak? What do you see in your spirit? Get something quickly. I want to touch and agree. I want to touch and agree with you. The Lord said you were going to be next in the line of miracles. I want to touch and agree. What do you see? What do you see? Do you see it? Say it out loud. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Will but come here. I want you to lay hands on your on her chest, and the financial stability that you have will transfer to her. Let's say, to leave, put your hand on her chest first, and let but put his hands on top of yours. And I want you to pray for that transfer, but. The stability that he enjoys will be yours as well in the name of Jesus. You have spoken and I know. Cassandra, are you listening? Are you listening to me? He's gonna stabilize your life. Then he's gonna bless you. Stability is the children's bread. Stability is one of the minimal things that God will do for you. You believe in for provision when God has miracles for you. Look beyond. That's, that's God's job. That provision stuff, that's, that's God's job. Miracles, that's where you dwell. Now clap your hands and give him praise because it is done. Woman of God, have you been... Woman of God, have you been house shopping yet? Where are you looking? Banning Beaumont, are you in that area? Where are you looking? Five bedroom, four bath. Clap your hands and give him a praise for it is so. I know. I feel your jealousy. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Did those docs get delivered yet? Did the docs get delivered? Ooh. Ooh, I hate the devil. See? Clap your hands and give him a praise because it's already done. It's already done. Come on, I need you to yell, it is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stand up and give God praise for you. It's already, come on, clap your hands and Hallelujah. it's already done. That's Hallelujah. I know Hallelujah. that it is so. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. That makes sense now. Thank you. Stick around Anybody else can sit down with you. You have spoken. You have spoken. And I know that. I know Listen, that help me sing this. So. Help me sing this saying, you have spoken. You have spoken. 
and I know that it is so. Say it again, you have spoken. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. One more time, you have spoken. You have spoken, and I know, and I know that it is so. Yeah. 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 Intercessors, when you pray what Hallelujah, God has put, Jesus. it releases the anointing in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise in this place. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to hold that word for you, Nate. I'm going to have a word for you. I'm going to hold it for a minute because God's going to bless you, young man. He's going to bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful moment of time where you have released us prophetically, Lord, to be a vessel, to be an instrument, to be orator of the mysteries and the wonders of God, Father. Oh, God, we just ask of you, Lord, you preach. Jesus, you preach. Jesus, you teach. Use my body, use my mind, use my hand, use my voice, Lord, for your word, your principles, your, your mysteries, Father, Lord, to be revealed in its own divine and perfect way, Father. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, and we will surrender to you. Come on, let's supercharge the atmosphere. Pray in your heavenly language. Come on, bless him, Come on, supercharge him. Worship 
Chantel, God said, get ready for a turnaround. Hallelujah, Jesus. Chantel, God said, get ready for a turnaround. How do you respond to a prophetic word, Chantel? Yeah, cap your hands, he said. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody say, late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn around. God's gonna turn around. Yeah. 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 It's gonna work in my favor. Work in your favor. It's gonna work in my favor. Work in my favor. It's gonna 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 work in my favor. Yeah. Uh oh, we'll get stuck. I know y'all that. How many of y'all say? This means war. We going to war on the devil today. Can we say it? Say, this means war. Oh, yeah. Come on. This means I'm telling y'all, y'all thought I was tripping when we started talking about that 320 experience. The whole church was looking at me like this. Why pastor throwing his hands up talking about 320? I bet you you ain't saying that no more though. <laughs> Listen. I'm going to be blessing your house very soon. Listen, I'm going to be blessing your house very soon. The one thing, listen, real quick, and then we're going to get to the word of God. The Lord said, set aside a room for prayer. Nobody sleeps in that room. This is a room for prayer where you set up the altar. You're going to pray for your family. Because as God is changing your lives, God's going to change your entire family. People that said they'll never walk into a church again is going to be fellowshipping on worship. Come on. Genesis. Genesis. Gen mm. The presence of the Lord is here. Amen, and I'm under a mandate. When I was a young man, I used to be able to get away with just shouting for about a good hour. <laughs> the Lord said, get that word. Okay. Yeah. Feed the blood, hallelujah, praise his name. Give the word. Amen. 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 <laughs> Genesis 1, 1 through 3. Are you healed? Huh? This is the place you give a God that heals on the spot. Put it.
Do you feel it right now? Are you healed? I don't feel anything right now. I've been having joint pain for like weeks. <laughs> Somebody say, and it is so! 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 Listen! If God can reveal it, He can heal it. God can heal it! Yes! Chantel, is she still in here? Do you own your home? Do you own your home? Do you own the home? The Lord said, stop referring to your house as a possibility, but refer to your house like it already is. And it is so! 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 Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Start referring to what God has told you he was going to do as if it already is. It's mine. Yes. I'm going to say this and we're going to get into the word because it lines up with the word. I'm already telling my wife, honey, after service, when we go to our beach house, you know everybody gonna be already be gone from the weekend. Hey, 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 and it is so. Wow, Aaron Bradley, listen, Aaron Bradley. You're gonna have to read this, Mama. Wait. <laughs> Aaron Bradley said, listen, he said, my business has developed tenfold since I have believed in my 320 experience. Wow. Let me show you this. Listen, wait, wait, wait. Put that testimony up from Pastor Keith Thomas up, Dylan. I want to show you guys something. Listen, go up. I want y'all to see something. We're going to praise and I got to teach you this principle. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, let me first uh, ask you guys to forgive me because I'm an early morning prayer person. So if you get a text two or three o'clock in the morning, that's me. And that is me. Because you have come before the presence of God. Listen. And if I call you and you are awake. Because some of you have been quickened in your spirit. But you refuse to look at your phone. If you pick up the phone when I call. You will immediately see what you've been asking God for. Go up, Dylan. It's under praise report. Yeah, listen to this. Listen to this. Go down one slide. It should be up or down before that chant. Yes, no, you got it? Can you see it? If it's not on there, don't worry about it. Ah. Okay. Ah. All right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Genesis, you know you're about to be rich, right? Amen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Read it. Read it. This is somebody, remember what I told you, the 320 experience. If we don't get on it, God is going to bless other people on the outside of our church. 
because he going to build his church. And we don't have a building fund. You don't see a thermometer on the wall. Let me tell you what God is doing to right now with this small group of people since we started. God has allowed us to save $14,000 towards our building. Listen, without a building fund. <laughs> no pledge cards. No building teams. Not Team Judah. Not Team Benjamin. None of that. Just God blessing his people. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Read this. Read, listen. Listen to this. It is with immense joy that I share this testimony of what the Lord has done in our lives. Pastor Wallace and First, and First Lady Wallace are great friends of our family. Me and my wife are faithful tithers and givers to the kingdom of God. Change Church has always had a special place in our heart. When Pastor Wallace started the series on the 320 experience, the Lord placed upon my heart to sow $320 into Change Church ministry on March 20th, 2022. Within 60 days of doing so, we were approved for a $100,000 credit line, and one small business, uh, and one small business owner gave us close to $9,000 to sow into our local church. This is wait, just. Wait. This is just. Wait! 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 Somebody do the math. What's 320 divided by 9,000? What fold is that? How many fold is that? That's a hundred fold, right? More than a hundred. How many fold is that? 300 fold? It's about, it's about 300 fold. <laughs> it's about 300 fold. 300 fold. 300 fold. This is just the beginning of what God will do when we were uh, when we were obedient to the word and prophetic instruction. I would like to thank Pastor and First Lady Wallace for being obedient to the Holy Spirit and allowing everyone to sow into the special seed offering. The Bible tells us in Second Chronicles 20 and 20, believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Change church under dynamic prophetic leadership. God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I encourage each of you, if you have not sown into the 320 experience, do it now. This is just the beginning. More testimonies to come. So, real quick, listen. So if he can give the man of God a 300% increase on $320, how much would it take for me to sow to get a million? Come on, Jesus. No, I'm serious. Do the math. Do the math. I don't know what fold that is. What, if it's a 300, it seems like we're averaging 300% or 300 fold. I don't, I only know 10 fold. I know that by heart. <laughs> All these hundreds, thousand folds. <laughs> That's God math. Amen. Somebody say God math. God math. Somebody say God math. God math. Do you know what God math is? One plus three is four. Two plus two is four. Four times one is four. Three plus one is four. But when four plus one is $9,000, That's that God math. Somebody touch yourself and say, I need that God math. I need that God math. Say, I need that God math. I need that God math. Press down. Shake it together. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm and running saying. over. Come on, come on, come on, musicians. We're going to, I need to teach you this principle. It won't take me long, 20, 30 minutes or so, but I really need to establish this principle with you. Listen. 
Hi, hey, 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 pay attention, pay attention, thank you. I need to establish, <laughs> I need to establish this principle. It is a crucial principle that has been misunderstood that the people of God have been doing without an understanding of it, therefore it has not worked for you. This principle is going to bless you. Therefore, we need to take our time. Somebody say, take your time. Take your time. I need to explain this principle. At the end of this principle, Annette Morton will be standing up here because God has opened an, a ridiculous door. She's going to drive from Long Beach on a Sunday morning to tell of the goodness of God. I Amen. declare it in the name of Jesus. Remember what the Lord said at the end of forgiveness, there's going to be blessings. And everybody looked at me all crazy like some of y'all doing right now. And it's okay because God has given us prophetic credibility. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's given us that credit. And I'm telling you, at the end of this, you're going to be able to call forth your own miracle. I receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. Now we're going to go slow. So all my little antics to keep you with me, I'm going to be doing those things. Because I need you to get this lesson. I need you to get this lesson. The Lord said to me, and before we read our scripture, he said, some of you are trying to pray down miracles that is already inside of you. You are saying, faithfully praying, Lord, send it. Lord, send it. Not knowing that the miracle is already sitting inside of your spirit. <sighs> so do not let that spirit of slumber. It is a demon. And it comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Do not sleep on this because this is going to help you. Genesis 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning, God, can you stand for the word? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. I want to talk about the principle of calling it forth. Somebody say the principle. The principle. Of calling it forth. Of calling it forth. Say the principle. The principle. Of calling it forth. Of calling it forth. You guys are not doing that right. Say the principle. The principle. Of calling it forth. Of calling it forth. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. The principle, the principle of calling it, of calling it forth, forth. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Have a seat. Here we go. I am introducing a new series today that is going to usher many of you into some ridiculous 320 experiences. Listen. For those of you that don't know what a 320 experience is, it is a move of God given to change church to bless both the people of God and the ministry so God can build his church. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Throw up your 320 real quick. You got to turn your hand. Some of y'all, you struggling. There we go. That's good. <laughs> y'all going to get it after a while. Last week was bananas. It was bananas. The Lord showed me prophetically, those of you who were with us, that there would be five testimonies. Amen? Amen. How many testimonies was, was manifesting last week? No ideal, right? I have never been to church in the 25 years that I've been alive. <laughs> I 
<laughs> but in the years I've been alive, I have never been to a service where the whole message is testimonies. Show of hands, amen? I've never seen that when person after person, it wasn't just financial, it was deliverance from addictions. It was healings, it was restoration. And so that showed us that we're in the right vein of what God wants to do for us. It is God's plan and his will to bless you. But it is crucial and absolutely important that you understand the principle of calling it forth. How many of you ever heard somebody say, call it forth? Yes. You've been in church any while you heard, and how many of you, did it, when it, and how many of you did not see it take place? Show of hands. You called it forth and it didn't happen. Amen. So the objective of this series is to, one, show you the principle of calling it forth and teach you how to apply it in your life. The second objection of objective for this series is to show you how to get the miracles out of you that you may not know it exists there. And the third objective of this series is to empower you and teach you how to live, listen, in the realm of prophetic creation. Somebody say, I want to live. I want to live. In the realm. In the realm. Of prophetic. Of prophetic. Creation. Creation. The realm of prophetic creation. Let me ask you these questions. How many of you desire a deeper spiritual revelation of God? You are drawn to God. Show of hands. Amen. How many of you are yet struggling with the purpose of your life? How many of you are in a challenging place because you feel successful but empty? How many of you have enough accomplishments to feel alive, but empty enough to know that there is still capacity that you haven't tapped into? This is the one that hit me all up in the mouth because I'm still waiting for my 320 experience. How many of you constantly attract people that live the life you believe you should be living? All around you, somebody is living the life that you believe you should be living. For instance, when you go out to eat, or you go to a concert, and they have the VIP section, you just feel, I should be there. There's no reason why I am not on stage shaking his or her hand after they finish the concert because I have that kind of favor. Is it just me or is it? I realized that in the principle of calling it forth that there were some things that God wanted to show me because Laura will vouch for you, 90% of my clientele are multimillionaires. Are you listening to me? And I was like, how can, I didn't even pay attention until Laura was like, baby, have you noticed that God keep blessing you through your clients? And I was like, ooh, favor, won't he do it? I was all excited until she said, that's because you're supposed to be a millionaire. Amen. And you keep attracting what is inside of you. Yes. Yes. Woo. Are you listening? How many of you have seen the 320 experience happen for so many people and you feel like yours is still stuck in the spirit realm? If you answered yes to any of these questions, this is going to be a very significant series for you. As the next dimension of your 320 experience will rely heavily, somebody say heavily. Heavily. On understanding the principle of calling it forth. Somebody say, call it forth. Call it forth. 
Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Listen, it is not that God doesn't want you to be successful. He's just waiting on you to position yourself. It is not that God doesn't want you to be blessed. He's just waiting on you to seek him for the revelation of your blessing. Yes, yes. Thus knowing and applying the principle of calling it forth will position you to receive the promises of God. Now, let me show you what a principle is. Clap your hands twice. A principle is a fundamental truth or a proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief, behaviors, or a chain of reasoning that has a predictable outcome. Let me say it again. A principle is a fundamental truth that serves as the foundation for a system of belief behaviors or a chain of reasoning that has a predictable outcome listen there are some spiritual principles somebody say spiritual spiritual that apply to all mankind regardless if you are saved or not People who have not been saved and, in, and who are not in right relationship with God have sown into the 320 and have been blessed. Let me show you some examples of spiritual principles that exceed or that operate despite of your relationship with God. The principle of giving operates outside of your relationship with God. It is a kingdom principle established by God because he loves mankind. Luke 6 and 38 says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. There is no condition on that. You do not have to be saved to reap the benefits of the principle of giving. That's why drug dealers, I remember in my last church I was in, there was a drug dealer that paid his tithes consistently. And to this day, he has not been caught. I'm sorry. Oops. He has not been caught. People around him have been caught and shot up, and this brother has not been caught. <laughs> Y'all looking at me funny, but it's a principle. He come in, he, he, he used to come in in his black full coat leather jacket on and pay his tithes in cash. Because it's a spiritual principle that exceeds your relationship with God. The principle of tithing. Malachi 3 and 10. Oh, this is going to be tough. Y'all are already looking at me crazy. This is good though. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. It is a spiritual principle that exceeds or does not care about the relationship you have with God. Watch this. The principle of fasting. Isaiah 58 and 6 says, Is not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Do you know or not know which is fast? Warlocks, fast. Wizards, fast. People of the occult fast because they understand if I humble my flesh 
to the agenda of the spirit world, they will use me in a greater capacity. <sighs> Never forget this story when my pastor at the time was on a plane. No, Evangelist McDaniel, he was on a plane and a lady kept refusing food. She kept refusing food. And they would bring her different stuff. She said, I'm not eating, I'm not eating, I'm not eating. And finally he asked her, he said, how come you're not eating? She said, oh, I'm fasting. He said, oh, you're a Christian. She said, no, I'm a Satanist. I just have to fast because I'm fasting against marriages. Fasting is a spiritual principle. Listen, I know that's deep, right? That's deep. You got to open your eyes. God has given me liberty to go into deeper things with you, and you got to know what you're dealing with. Listen to this. These spiritual principles work regardless of your status with God, saved or unsaved, believer or non-believer, because God established them in the spirit realm. Somebody say spirit realm. Spirit realm. To be accessed by anyone that has both the knowledge and the mind to do it. Again, a principle is a fundamental truth or a proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief, behaviors, or a chain of reasoning that has a predictable outcome. Pay attention. When a principle is consistently applied, the desired outcome is constantly reached. When a principle is consistently applied, the desired outcome is constantly reached. Consistent means I am doing something the same way over and over again over time. Which means the outcome will be constant and it will not change. When spiritual principles are consistently applied, there will constantly be predictable outcomes. For example, when you consistently follow the algorithms of sacrificial giving, you will constantly reap the bountifulness of its truth. One person got that. Yell, I receive it. I receive it. Listen, when you consistently follow the algorithms of tithing, you will constantly root the bountiful blessings from its truth. Listen, when you consistently pursue purity with God, you will constantly be in his presence. Let me make this carnal so you can understand. If you consistently go to the weight room, you will... Okay, I lost half the room. Then don't speak an English, Pastor. You lost me. Jim is a word that I don't speak. <laughs> I don't speak. No hablo Jim. <laughs> Listen to this. Consistency in any spiritual principle will balance your life and provide a constant flow of a thing. Your life is incons inconsistent and not constant because you're inconsistent in the principles that you know. Woo! Somebody say, get consistent. Get consistent. There is no consistent flow of blessings in your life because you are, no, the constant flow of blessings in your life because you are not consistent in your principles of giving. Amen. Relationships thrive on consistency. They thrive in consistency. You know the person that you're with. Married or divorced, you know that person. You know that person don't like keys. You 
scrambled eggs. I'm gonna put some pepper in it, some tomatoes, make an omelet. I'm gonna put some cheese in it. You're gonna consistently get a constant response because you didn't take in consideration what they didn't like. I said it. Somebody say, be consistent. Be consistent. If you greet your loved one and it's like, how you doing, baby? Hey, girl, how you doing? Good. All right. How you doing, baby? Hey, girl, you good. All right. And then one day, what you want? <laughs> That's not being consistent. That destabilizes the environment. Same thing happens in the spirit realm. When you consistently enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, God creates an environment for you to get a breakthrough. But the one Sunday that you allow the devil to take his place, you will miss the miracle that God has for you. Somebody say, be consistent. Be consistent. <laughs> Be consistent with your praise. Be consistent with your worship. Be consistent with your prayer. Be consistent with your love. Hallelujah. People around you don't know what to do with you. Sometimes you're hot. Sometimes you're cold. Sometimes you got an attitude. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're up. Sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're around. Sometimes you're here. Sometimes you're there. We don't know what to do. Be consistent. <laughs> Consistence breeds constants. I want you to lay on your hands on yourself real quick and begin to pray and say, you need to be consistent, baby. Come on, say, you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent. Say, you're not seeing what you want to see because you're not consistent. You're not having what you want to have. Because you're not consistent. You're not living where you want to live. Because you're not consistent. You're not possessing what you want to possess. Because you're not consistent. And when you become consistent, God will become constant. Listen. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, stay on that, Ashley, because I got quite a few scriptures. Let's go ahead and start over, daughter. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That is consistent. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, that is the constant. Because you are steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, it gives you a consistency. And then God lets you know that your labor is not a vein. That's the constant. Listen to this. Your job in regards to any spiritual principle is to be consistent. God's job is to be constant. Listen, your job regarding any spiritual principle is to be consistent. God's job is to be constant. Somebody say, be constant. Be constant. Consistency will change your life. It will change your life. When I met my wife, I was 180 pounds. Ripped. She consistently made chocolate fudge brownies. And I constantly ate them. And 60 pounds later, <laughs> listen, consistency will change your life. Listen to this, listen. The more consistent you are with God, the more constant you will see God move in your life. Wow. 
The more consistent you are with God, he will constantly show you that you can trust him. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, that is the constant, of them that diligently seek him. That is the consistent. Are you getting this? With that understanding of what a principle is, now watch this. The principle of calling it forth states, by consistently applying the revelation of the will of God for your life. Somebody say, my life. My life. You will use your authority, aptitude, and awareness to constantly proclaim spiritual mysteries, and Jesus will cause it to manifest in your now. Somebody got it. Say that again. I receive it. Say it again. I receive it. You got to learn how to respond to prophetic utterance. When it agrees with your spirit and it's new revelation, you say, I receive it. But if it's something that you already know, you say, and it is so. Listen to this. The principle of calling it forth states, by consistently applying the revelation of the will of God. In other words, the prophetic word that has been spoken or the dreams that you've been having or the revelation that God has with you according to his will, if you accept it, you will use your authority, aptitude, and awareness to constantly proclaim the spiritual mysteries and Jesus will cause it to manifest in your life. The principle of calling it forth is one of the spiritual principles, listen, that requires a deeper relationship with God. People are calling things forth that don't have the relationship with God for it. People are calling things forth that do not have the relationship for it. And you wonder why it's not coming to pass. A friend on my job can call me at 12 o'clock and I'm not gonna answer the phone. An old homie will call me at one o'clock. I'm not answering the phone. But if my son or my wife calls me, I'm picking up the phone because I'm in relationship with them. The reason why you are in a atmosphere of praise and worship, yes, and you're giving God glory, yes, and out of enthusiasm, you say, I call for strength. I call for this. And it's not happening. It's because you are not in a sacrificial relationship with God. The principle, oh God. Where there is no relationship. The prophetic creation or the realm of prophetic creation is not accessed. It is a privilege for God to allow you to speak things out of the spirit realm into the now. But it is a privilege because of relationship. You can see it in our own lives. Somebody can call you right now and ask you to drive to L.A. And you'd be like, are you crazy? I am not going to L.A. Period, bro. You know how much traffic, bro? It is 3 o'clock. Traffic is bad. But let somebody you're in relationship with, you be like, what time you want me there? You want air conditioning or heat? <laughs> you want the SUV or the sports car? <laughs> Why? Because you're in relationship. Listen, look at this. John 15, 7 and 9 says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Listen, as the father hath loved me, 
so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. For some mysteries of God to be revealed, you have to love Jesus so much that people can't tell where you end and Jesus begins. You're so in love with Jesus, you speak the dialect of heaven. You're so in love with him that you live by integrity because you don't want to vex the spirit of God. You're so in love with him, you can treat an enemy right because he, you know that he's watching you. You're so in love with him that you can forgive somebody that has done you wrong because you know it pleases him. Woo! Fall in love with Jesus and you'll be able to call things forth because God is responsible. To uphold the word of the people that love him. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody and they said something and you know they can't complete it, but you make it your business to make sure they don't fail? Like what? You're going to bake 15 cheesecakes overnight. Well, let me go ahead and get in there. I guess we baking 15 cheesecakes. Because before I let you fail, I'll get all up in the mix for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I say, fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Do you know, in the middle of the night, when you get that unction to pray, you know the Holy Ghost just wants to spend time with you. Hey, Echo, pray. Oh. It's two o'clock in the morning. You better see me at six, Jesus. Do you not know some of you, I feel this in the spirit, some of you are being woke up early in the morning because God is preparing you for your spouse. So, I just lost half the room. For God to send you a woman of God or a man of God, he's going to teach you spiritual disciplines because that need of a person will at times be greater than yours. Wow! <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost! If you can't wake up for God, why would you wake up for your love? I ain't got time. I'm tired, Jesus. Lord, send my Boaz, Jesus. Lord, send my Naomi Ruth, Jesus. It's training for what God has for you. And until you can respond, in gratitude it's going to continue to pass you by you can call it forth until you are blue in the face but you gotta fall in love with God first have you ever been in church before? And that old pastor be, pastor be tripping. Tell me, praise the Lord. Clap your hands. I be tired. He lucky I'm even in church. No, you lucky you in church. What is this concept where people feel they're doing the pastor a favor when you come to church? You are blessing your own self. The agenda of God will go forth. I don't think I'm, mm, mm. I don't think I'm going today. He made me mad. I ain't going. You just missed your miracle. Watch this and then I'm done. 
We got some. I'm going to take my time on this series. Your bank statement shows you who you love. Just play something soft. I don't think they can take a high one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Glory to the living God. When you look at your statement at the end of the month, it'll show you who you love. Y'all want me to get off that? Okay. Okay. And God is gracious. The Bible says in Lamentations, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we aren't consumed, for his compassions faileth not. They are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. But what you are asking for will go above faithfulness. What you are asking for has to be built in a relationship. Does that make sense now why you're calling things forth and it's not happening? The Lord deals with me where he trained me relationally because we had so many issues and he always reflected my relationship with him. I have an expectation of my wife and she has an expectation of me. God has an expectation of you just like you have an expectation from him. I don't care. Somebody say, I don't care. Say that. I don't care. If it's 3.30 in the morning, if I get off work and I am hungry, and I call you, and I ask for a cheeseburger with bacon, sautéed onions on the side, french fries fried to a deep crisp, I expect to have it. <laughs> it's cold it is. It was already cold. It's brisk. It's brisking. Because I'm in relationship. The same way she don't have to ever put gas in her car. It was so funny. She went, she had to go, <laughs> she had to go to the gas station for something. She's like, honey, I don't know what to do. I said, honey, put the card in the hole. Wait, hit the 89. Wait, put the zip code. She was completely lost because I, Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Because there is an expectation when you fall in love with somebody. Woo! Somebody said be consistent. Do you know when you're loving on God... He'll send somebody that treats you like you treat him. I got to send a blessing to that man. That man is consistent in church. He kind. He's giver. He helps little old ladies across the street. <laughs> He's the handyman. He cleans the church. Let me send somebody that will undergird him. So when he gets home from all those duties, he can feel my love through his spouse. Oh! 
But if we got to beg you to sing, beg you to clean the church, beg you to give, beg you to do stuff, can you please meet me here on time? Can you please get on the conference call? Can you please pray that God's going to send you bodies just like that? Then you're going to come to me, Pastor, they won't listen. I'll be like, mm -hmm. Somebody said the principle of calling it forth. Of calling it forth. We're standing all over the building. <laughs> it's the truth anyhow. It's the truth anyhow. Listen, 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 pay attention, pay attention. At the end of this series, if you apply these truths, listen to me, I'm telling you, you are going to be able to call those things out of the spirit realm, out of your spirit, into your life, and in 30 days, you will see your turnaround. I receive it. Hallelujah. All this prophetic word going forth. All these people being blessed and you still doubting if God's word is true. The number one principle of calling things forth, fall in love with God. Love him more than anything else. Some of you have hot dates. But wait a minute, I didn't pray today. Wait a minute, I didn't. I, I got to talk to daddy. I got to eat. I'm sorry. Because if they leave, guess who's going to be there? Can you take a moment? And close your eyes. You're safe. Somewhere around this building, you, we have armed security in here. Trust me. Now, we don't tell everybody all of our business, but we stay ready. The Bible says watch and pray. I know that's not the right scripture, but I want you to have a conversation with God. And I want you to present to him everything that you have put before him. And you know he has required it of you. Was the best thing I ever, ever done. Woman of God, I don't. Tasha, that lady, oh, the spray team singer. Jesus, yes. Falling in love with I'm going to tell you after service. Because you don't know me well enough yet. I'll tell you after service. Falling in love. Okay, did you have that conversation with God? Jesus. Now I want to ask you this question softly. Is that thing worth it? No. Is it worth it? No. Is it worth it? In his Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we venture into the principle of calling him forth. We understand the first thing you want us to do is fall in, in love with you. His arms. Father, let us fall in love with you. We recognize when we fall in love with you, you are compelled to answer our call. I feel protected. Father, in the name of Jesus, softly. Lord, whatever I, matter of fact, hold up, no music really quick. I want to say this to somebody. I hear in the spirit realm, I hear in the spirit that God wants to be first. Listen, 
I can literally feel your 320 experience wanting to bust out of the spirit realm. I, I literally see, I can literally see a man. I see a figure of a man and he's doing this. He's trying to bust through this dimension to come. And the only thing that can release him is you falling in love with Jesus. Lord, let me fall in love with you again. Let me fall in love. I've lost my love. The world has taken my love for you, Lord. I've, I've been so concerned with life and things, Lord. Let me fall in love with you again, Lord. I want to love you again. Father, I need that love that I just look up into heaven, Lord, and I, and I can feel your love for me. That kind of love when I feel your spirit quickening me. The kind of love that forces me to read your word all night long. The kind of love, Father, that causes me to worship you in the midnight hour. The kind of love Father Lord. Oh God, when I desire the things of you more than I desire to breathe, the kind of love Father, when I want you more than anything else, let me fall in love with you again, Jesus. Let me fall in love with you. I want to let me fall in love with you. Let me fall in love with you, Father. Not just for the blessing because I know they will come. But let me love you just because you're you. Just because you're God. I give you my all, Father. I give you my all. In Jesus' name. Fall in love. Vance Juan, fall in love. Yoli, fall in love. Fall in love, Talene. Kia, fall in love. Dad, fall in love. Monet, fall in love. Mama, fall in love. It's the best thing you'll ever do. I hear you singing that song. Before we dismiss... Can you just sing that out? We don't have a mic, but falling in love. Sing that. I'd rather, I'd rather be. Come on, if you know it, help me sing it. Oh, 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 oh. falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. When I fell in love. It was a the best thing I'd ever, ever done in his own. Hallelujah. Thing. On this week, your prophetic assignment. Listen, daughter, you make sure you get It Is So. Get that song, It Is So. This week, I want you to take the time to expressly, oh, yes, woo, to expressly. Spend time with God. In fact, outside of your job, I want you to give God the lion's share of your time this week. Turn the TV off. 
Get off social media if you're not on Bible study or women empower, um, empowerment or stronger together and dedicate that time to God. What you're going to notice by Thursday, somebody say by Thursday. By Thursday. When you call on Jesus, you will feel his presence come in whatever room. <laughs> Woo! Hey! JJ! Virtual church, this week, listen, turn off your TVs, get off of your social media, and if it's not work, you're going to worship God. And I'm telling you, by Thursday, you're going to say this, listen to this, I prophetically declare to you, by Thursday, you're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, can you show your presence, and you are going to literally feel God, feel the room. When that happens, can you text me? Can you text me? Everyone in here know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Everybody saved? We've already prayed for the sick. Clap your hands and give him glory, amen. You may be seated. Listen. Prophetic instructions. I called three people, or I texted three people with prophetic instruction. If you are here, are you doing that today? Bruce, get, oh, you didn't know. Oh, <laughs> come on. Give me my cell phone. Where's my cell phone? Come on, prophet. I see the case overturning, listen, and I see favor. You're going to be able, oh, you're going to move to Louisiana on me? You're going to do all that work? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop praying for people. <laughs> ah. Okay, you'll be another distant member. Hey, Amen. Because you'll show moving to Louisiana when this is over. And you're going to get six, three to six more acres. Part of the reason why you've been delayed is what you can help birth this ministry. Listen, we're going to pray. Now, I don't want y'all to know they business, so can you start worshiping? Come on, open up. Come on, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on, fall in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Falling in love with Jesus. It was the best thing I'd ever, 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 ever done. Hey, hey, hey. In his arms, I, in his arms, here I feel protected. In his arms, I'm never disconnected. Oh, in his arms. I feel protected. There is no place I'd rather, I'd rather be. Said that it is done. God said that it is done. And it is done. And it is done. And it is done. And it is done. That's it. Mm. 
I will close mm -hmm. the opportunity next week and it will not be there again. Next week, remember, if you get a text from me, I know the musicians be fussing. Vance Juan, everybody be fussing. They be like, why pastor God texts us at 4 o'clock in the morning? Do he know brother sleep? The Holy Ghost don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know the Lord reveals it. Y'all the words. I know y'all be talking about me. But I love you anyways. <laughs> are you listening to me? I'm not going to look at you because you know who you are. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't do it. As we prepare for our giving, our giving. Listen, this is what I want you to do. Listen, listen, listen. This is what I want you to do. I want you, as you lay your seed down today, say what you're sacrificing for. Say what you are sacrificing for. You don't have to say it out loud, but say it on the altar. Did you already consecrate the altar? Six acres of land. How many? How? Six more acres, Yolanda. Six more acres. Are you listening to me? And you're going with money. And you're going with money. Bring your sacrifices to the altar. To that individual, let me know when you do. I want to touch and agree with you. Let me know when you do. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bring my wallet up, honey. Can you get my wallet, prophet? Come on, babies. All my babies. Come here, man. Come on. All my babies. Come here, man. Oh, you got an offering today. Go ahead, put your offering down. Here, put this in your pocket. Here, put this in. Here, put that in your pocket. That's 300 fold in Jesus' name. I love you too, man. I love you too, prophet. Come on, babies. Here. Put that. You can keep it or put it in the offering. You can keep it or put it in the offering. Here. Come here, Cortland. Here. The Lord told me to bless you. You can keep it or put it in the offering. Amen. You can keep it or put it in the offering. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead and keep it. You can keep it or put it in the offering. You can keep it or put it in the offering. You can keep it or put it in the offering. Here, man. No, no, no. Let me. Come on. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. No, no. Leave that there, baby. Here. Here. That's for you. That's yours. Everybody else, it's prophetic, Chantel. Trust me, it's prophetic. Here you go. Here, baby. Here, give that to him. You gonna leave it? You gonna take it? What you gonna do, man? But <laughs> he's struggling. You gonna... Are you sure? Here, because you gave that. Now, there. See what happens when you give? God gives back to you double. Amen. <laughs> Won't he do it? Come on, let's read our, our, our sacrifice of giving. Jesus, have mercy. I feel your presence. I feel your presence, Lord. I feel your presence. Let's read that. 
You don't have to read it aloud. Just read that with me. Did you give yet? Did you give? Come here. Do you feel the presence of God? Yes. Let's see the Kabakashi. Bonamana Keji Kabakasa. Let's read it together. Lord, I confess this is my best. Tunity to you first of what you have given to me. According to your word, I receive financial increase, blessings and favor. Miracles and new ideas, concepts and opportunities, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, unexpected debt cancellation that will increase my resources a hundredfold. Lord, send prosperity now, according to Psalms 118 and 25. I denounce every negative confession over my finances and investments, properties I own and will own in Jesus' name. I declare money comes to me now to fulfill my destiny and aid me in my kingdom purpose. I am not broke. I have more than enough. I'm not living in lack. I'm living in the surplus of abundance. My offering empowers my church to have more than enough. I see by faith for our global expansion that will result in worldwide missions and acts of kindness. It's a tither. The devourer is rebuked. My harvest is protected in obedience to your word. I declare and decree that I now live in the overflow. And it is so in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give him praise. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your, your communication devices. Amen. A tither, please grab. They're giving a tither. Please grab their givings, please. Don't leave without giving me your information, Cassandra. Okay. Resebakati mi asurum baka. Dirida mala na mashiklanda sama. Hallelujah. What's your assignment this week? What's your assignment this week? How much TV you gonna watch this week? None. <laughs> How much time you gonna spend on social media if you ain't in Bible study or stronger together? None. <laughs> Let's say amen for Prophet Joe. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's always a, a pleasure to, there, there's no, it's like words just do not suffice being in the presence of the Lord. It's just the English language is not that advanced. It's, you know, like when you're, you know, in the midst of people and you're with your friends or family or oftentimes even when we come in here, we put this front on, we put on this mask and we make it look like everything's all put together, but in the presence of the Lord, you don't, there's no need to do all that. You can sit there and just weep and, and just be yourself and feel however it is that you feel and be honest with God. And he's well, he's so welcoming. Just, I mean, the.
to just truly be yourself and just let go of all the walls that we put up, you can just let it all go in the in the in front of him, before him, and just be self. I mean, that is the the greatest love we can ever experience is the love of Jesus. And so I hope we all take take that time seriously as we go before the Lord. And in that time, if there's something that you're feeling, even if it feels wrong to say, say it. Be honest with God. Be honest with the Lord. Because he loves you. He only wants good things for you. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want, he's not trying to do any harm to you. He only wants to prosper you. But we have to be willing to let him in. And that's a choice. That's your choice. That is your choice, your individual choice. So you choose. Amen. All right. So we got a few announcements. A few announcements. So intercessory activation service will be June 26th. Those who will be a part of the intercessory workshop will be activated in the anointing ceremony that Sunday. So invite your friends and family. Let's come down and support them that are going higher in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Father's Day. Is that next Sunday? Next Sunday. Father's Day is next Sunday. Amen. Let's give a hand to the fathers. Amen. Amen. So Father's Day is next Sunday. We want to celebrate the dads, the spiritual fathers, mentors, fathers who are no longer with us, and the apostle of the house on that day. So let's be prepared to sow into their life on that day, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I mean, personally, he's done so much for me, and I honor the man of God whenever I get the chance to, and, and I'll be telling him, like, you just wait until, this, until the millions come. You, you gonna be living lavishly. But on that day, let's honor the man of God. I mean, he comes in here Sunday after Sunday with a smile on his face. You guys don't even know the things that's going on in his life, and he will never present it to you, but he comes in here with a smile on his face and serves you all faithfully. And a lot of times as people, we tend to just keep coming to him and asking and just pulling on him and just trying to continue to take from him and, and help me, Pastor, help me, Pastor. Help. But when was the last time you asked him, hey, man, I God, how can I help you? What can I do for you? It, like his schedule blows my mind. I'm to be up at 3.30 and then be going to sleep at like 11, 12 o'clock and he does this on a consistent basis. It's like, ooh, you, I, look, I need my sleep because goodness gracious. <laughs> But he does so much for us, and he asks nothing in return. So next Sunday, let's honor the man of God. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. So next Sunday, there's also going to be a graduation. Uh, last year, they're having a graduation that day, so parking will be limited. Uh, be just everybody park, here, park back here. We're going to close off the... Um, the uh, gate so those who are going for the graduation they won't be able to park back here because they will take those spots if it's left open uh, but get here get here on time so that there will be space available because if you get here late <laughs> um, stronger together with first lady Laura up and uh, is up and ready for registration bring a friend join her for the powerful time in Christ on June 25th at 12 p.m. the QR code for the registration is in the lobby um, I don't, you know, I don't know what the stuff that she'd be talking about, but I, you know, slip in every once in a while on, um, the, um, the, the Tuesdays, the, the, uh, Tuesday services that she does on, on Instagram live and she'd be coming in with some uppercuts. So the, I, I, I can only imagine the word that she's giving on, uh, on the event for you guys, a stronger together with all the women. So join, you know, come in uh, of all the women, like go, go to the service. And, and though, if you are genuinely want to grow in the Lord, go to the service and, or go to the event and, and be open and be ready to receive what God has for you. Cause he has something for each and every single one of you, but you need the grace of the pastor and the first lady. You need that. We need their grace because there's a certain grace that they have that, uh, the Lord has given to them that overshadows us. So partake, partake of the grace, get involved, see what she has for you. And grow, and like I said, let's all grow together in the Lord. All right. And so we need volunteers. Of course, we need volunteers. This is, you know, it's a lot of part, a lot of moving parts here. A lot of things are going on. And so it's not easy to, you know, do this all with a limited amount. I mean, Sunday after Sunday. Sunday after Sunday, you know, we're in here, you know, setting up and, and doing all the things that we need to do. And, um, you know, it can be tough. And, you know, people want to take vacations. We have things that, you know, 
we all have time. We know we all have things that we want to do. And so we need volunteers, those that help support the ministry. And so last but not least, uh, if you are giving to the apostle or the first lady um, personally, please mark it on the envelopes as a token of love. Uh, click love token on easy tithe or write it on the note section of your cash app or Venmo platforms if you are giving to them personally. Amen. All right. So let's all stand for our dismissal prayer. All right. You guys ready? Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace, and they shall put God's name upon our children, and God will bless them. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, Johannes, and concerning his house be established forever and do as thou hast said. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, O oh God. We thank you for your presence, Lord, for the word that has gone forth, for the word that you have spoken into our hearts, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for this eye-opening experience, Lord, for the light of you entering into our eyes, Lord. Thank you for revelation, O oh God. Thank you for exposing us to, the, to a greater level of you, O oh God. Thank you for taking us higher, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the things that you do, Lord, the things that we are aware of and the things that we are unaware of, O oh Lord. You are so good to us, O oh God, that we can never do anything in return we could never do anything to repay what you do but you do it because you are so good because you're so loving because you're so kind you continue to look after us you continue to keep us and provide for us lord and so we thank you father god we will honor you with our lives that you may be glorified that more people may come to know you in the mighty name of jesus we thank you father god amen and amen now go live the changed life god bless you see you next week <laughs>